Hey guys, it's Bro Steve, and uh, today I'm going to be reading from Oswald Chambers' Upmost for His Highest. Today we will specifically be looking at the June 25th reading, which is um, titled Receiving Oneself in the Fires of Sorrow. And the scripture that is referenced here is verses 27 to 29 of John 12. And to give a little bit of background on these verses, my study Bible uh, titles this chapter, The Last Public Discourse. And what it's referring to is, um, these are basically the words that Jesus spoke uh, before he was to be betrayed into the hands of men. And um, the verses read as follows. Now my soul is troubled and distressed, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour of trial and agony. But it was for this very purpose that I have come to this hour that I might undergo it. Rather, I will say, Father, glorify, uh, that is to honor and extol your own name. Then there came a voice out of heaven saying, I have already glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd of bystanders heard the sound and said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. And now to get into the reading. My attitude as a saint to sorrow and difficulty is not to ask that they may be prevented, but to ask that I may preserve the self God created me to be through every fire of sorrow. Our Lord received himself in the fire of sorrow. He was saved not from the hour, but out of the hour. We say that there ought to be no sorrow, but there is sorrow, and we have to receive ourselves in its fires. If we try and evade sorrow, refuse to lay our account with it, we are foolish. Sorrow is one of the biggest facts in life. It is no use saying sorrow ought not to be. Sin and suffering are, and it is not for us to say that God has made a mistake in allowing them. Sorrow burns up a great amount of shallowness, but it does not always make a man better. Suffering either gives me myself or it destroys myself. You cannot receive yourself in success. You lose your head. You cannot receive yourself in monotony. You grouse, which is to complain or grumble. The way to find yourself is in the fires of sorrow. Why it should be so is another matter, but that it is so is true in the scriptures and in human experience. You always know the man who has been through the fires of sorrow and received himself. You are certain you can go to him in trouble and find that he has ample leisure for you. If a man has not been through the fires of sorrow, he is apt to be contemptuous. He has no time for you. If you receive yourself in the fires of sorrow, God will make you nourishment for other people. So what's the moral of the story here? Uh, The moral of the story is that uh, trials, troubles, and tribulations are inevitable. And they will either make us or break us. And they are something that should be embraced. And the way in which they make us is if we accept them and praise God through the troubles. Whereas the way that they break us is if we take on the attitude of Satan, which is woe is me and uh, self-pity. And if we do that, that's when ourselves get destroyed and end up in destructive decisions going forward. So we must make a choice as to how we are going to deal with the trials. I also think it's worth here jumping back a couple verses in John 12 to verses 24 to 25, where it reads from the Amplified, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls under the earth and dies, it remains just one grain that never becomes more but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it, but anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. Whoever has no love for, no concern for, no regard for his life here on earth, but despises it, preserves his life forever and ever. And so what that brings me to is that in this life, um, we can either live for comfort, in which case, I mean, Life may appear to be great, but likely uh, the depth in in which we live to attain 
that temporary pleasure is, is going to wind us up in eternal ruin. Whereas um, if, if we're seeking to do God's will, and if we're denying ourselves daily, uh, then it, we're going to have suffering. Uh, and, and it's also written that all who live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, for the servant is not greater than his master. And another important spiritual principle that is demonstrated here is that in the same way that Christ died, that many could be brought to glory, if, if we give ourselves and we give our lives, despite the suffering, we will be fruitful and God will be able to use us to bring many sons to glory. Whereas if we're just living to be comfortable, we're going to be spiritually dead Christians that are of no service to God. And when we stand in front of God in judgment, then we really will be saying, woe is me. So we have to embrace these principles of pain and suffering um, just as our master did. And I'm going to end here by reading a section of Stu Weber's book, Spirit Warriors. And this is going to be from the chapter entitled, Our Enemy's Strategies, and under the subheading, Depression and Discouragement. And for bullet number two, it reads, When discouragement comes, don't run. Look up and ask three questions. We live in a culture that says you should never have to experience discomfort or pain. You have a right to immediately have relief by whatever means necessary. But that's not the way God works. Ask Job. Ask Elijah. Ask Moses. Ask David. Ask Christ himself, who agonized in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed earnestly for relief from pain. He was in such deep pain that he sweated blood. But he didn't run. He stood firm. He held his ground. Aren't you glad? When discouragement comes to you, don't head for the hills. Instead, ask these three questions. God, what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to change in me? What are you trying to do through me? And that concludes today's mini-sermon, which was based on Oswald Chambers' June 25th reading from My Utmost for His Highest. And I encourage you all to do as the psalmist David wrote in Psalm 32, verse 6, where he wrote, For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee, that is God, in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters it shall not come nigh unto him.